Hi, Sportster Paul here. We're tearing down this 1982 Iron Sportster. I should note it's not right. This cover I don't think goes to this year because you might see over on this other camera over here, this goes into air. So either it's missing an inner or an outer. This is where, like I told you, the parts manual, pay for it. Uh, you can go back and look and see there's like at least three different sprocket covers. There's a steel inner that they used in 79, which shouldn't apply to this. This does look like an 82 cover, but why it doesn't line up back here, well, that's going to be a mystery for a later show. The other thing is, I also, should, I guess while I got it out, show you the service manual. If I hold it right side up, it would help. Service manual for, for this year. Cost money, but well worth it. And then I told you about having a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. This is where you can know things like, you know, missing cover bolt screws to remind you that it's like, oh, I got to go and I got to dig through all these things and I got to find the cover bolt screws, right? I've got to go through the parts book. Matter of fact, let's do this. Cover bolt screws. Uh, what else? Sprocket, sprocket, cover, wrong? Question mark. Now, in addition to doing this side today, we're going to get these lifter blocks out. There, always some new disappointment. Apparently, these very late model, 82, they used to have slots here. How can we show? I guess the sky cam you can see up there. There's sky, you know, slots on either side of these. Maybe this cam over here you could see. They're all smooth here. There's no little groove cut. The reason they used to have those grooves is for this Jim's tool. Uh, it's a factory tool, but Jim made a good version of it. 95724-57. It's got this little, right? And it would slip in here. It would pick that up. Well, I guess you have to go all the way out to get it. And, and you may have to take the, uh, the adjuster off, right? But you get this in here, it hooks under there, and then you can, with the big Allen, you can close down and it lifts, you know, it's pushing down on the lifter itself, which picks up the block. Apparently they cost reduced that by 1982, but I've usually, I don't think I've ever used this. I bought it on general principle because it's cool guy stuff and then never used it. Here's the instructions sheet that uh, comes with it. All right, so, so what we can do now, Oh, this one I loosened before. I've got my clean uh, bins. I got my clean stuff. I've got another little bin at the top end, all that stuff. The top end is put away, getting ready to be cleaned and be organized. I checked, there's no, no lock washer. I, I put lock washer and flat washer under these, maybe get a slightly longer bolt. The factory says no, which is surprising. Usually something this short, you do, uh, you know, a longer bolt will stretch a little and that serves like a lock washer, keeps a constant tension. They don't back out as often. But these short bolts, well, and don't use Loctite. Don't glue your bike together. I hate people to do that. It's just, you want to see, see how nice it is? It free rides, right? So then people start using automatic tools. I've seen hack mechanics put stuff in, Vroom, put a nut in there, Vroom, half inch impact. Don't do that. You want to, you want to feel stuff, right? You want to feel if it's the, the threads are smooth. If you got make a note, oh, this number one lifter is tight, chase threads, all that kind of stuff. So here's our four bolts. Now, since this is later, the heads had those two threaded holes in it to bolt the air filter to. Earlier models, you can see in the parts book, have got a stud, I think on this one, a stud comes up and then a metal strap goes on. And especially 79 and later with those rubber ring, rubber band intake manifold gaskets, you got to support that carb. So let's see if we can do my trick here, my favorite hammer. Turn it sideways, big screwdriver. Oh, these are loosely fit, we lucked out. And grab the lifter as well. Push the lifter in. Maybe this camera's better to show it. Put the lifter back in. There we go. Lifter back in. Try not to handle it too much. There's rollers inside here, right? 
And those rollers, they say you're not supposed to put rollers in solvent. So what I like to do is give these no chance to get any dirtier than they are already. We'll put that in here. I guess we can be a little Mickey Mouse, put the bolts in. So we lucked out. Oh, good, they all, well, they're all coming out easy. You saw the, the, what happens if you can't get them out easy. You know, I would whack it, spin it with, with this where you, so you can get a screwdriver under it. I don't think we're going to have to do that, no. Same thing, put these here. Why won't it go? Unbelievable. Oh, look at this. See, this is, that looks like a piece of silicone. See, people do this. Oh, you can see they siliconed here. That's usually because it might be weeping from here, and they put the silicone. You can see the silicone's getting in the engine. It could blow up the engine. Sand will be ground up by roller bearings. Silicone will skate that bearing, turn it blue, and weld it into one piece. But why is this not going? Went a little further there. There. Wow. You know, there is a no worth there. Why is why is this one? Of course, I didn't mark it. But you you can allow you know if you wanted to. You you can mark this as number one. Right? I usually to think of them as interchangeable. But when you put all this together and get it all lithium greased up, hopefully when you wash it and clean it, you know, there's still a cork here. I think an 82 is supposed to have O-rings. I don't like O-rings. I prefer corks. So here, come up a little bit. Really gentle with this, right? Because you can nick gas, you can nick gasket surfaces. How's this one feel? See, this one's the way it's supposed to be, almost its own weight has it dropped down. So we got our stuff in here. Now can the sky cam see a little bit into these bores, right? The camshafts are in. This is all loose assemble. I hope there's cams in this machine. But you can see the camshafts here. So there's a spec, I don't know what it is, five thousandths to ten thousandths, for how loose those cams are. If you make them too tight, and I've done this, they turn blue and they get hotter and it will stop the motorcycle, right? If, if, you, if you bring them too slow, too tight. Things, as hard as like sloppy tolerances. Look, more of this silicone, horrible. Uh, so you can get, a, uh, I use like little long thin screwdrivers or one screwdriver, you stick it in, you, pull, you twist it one way, get the cam lobe so it's pointing up. Twist it one way, push it towards you. Twist it the other way. After a while, you can almost visually kind of see thunk, thunk. Yeah, that's about five thousandths. You know, that's good. And uh, set them up like that. But it's something you should do because you'll see there are shims that if it's too sloppy, you add shims to the right spot on the, on the camshaft. And those shims close up that that gap and keep keep these cams from rattling. It makes things a little quieter. It's it's a good thing to do. Okay. So next, what, let's get the sprocket cover off. There's only one bolt holding it on. Oh yeah. In a oh no, more than one bolt. There's this big nut down at the bottom. I remember how we do this. Oh, yeah. Bags are cheap if they help you remember. Of course, the nice thing about making videos is, and, and also you can take pictures, right? It's also good to have a camera to take pictures of stuff coming apart. There's a big nut down here that comes off. And then astonishingly bad design. They, the peg is just held onto the sprocket cover instead of the frame like it should be, or at least the engine like the later models, the Evos and stuff. So this is a great way to crack this cover. I guess you can always buy another cover. Oh, here's, here's the problem. It's, it's a dash 90 part. So this is for a much later model where it doesn't line up here. So I'll have to figure something out. Might get away with it. It fits. It's got the uh, sky cam short, just barely. It's got this here. But, but this is what doesn't line up with this. Right? You can see this is far back. But otherwise, it mostly fits. So you can see this is mix and match, match kind of stuff. 
So we'll put this in here with our clean stuff. There is a nut here, but no sprocket. I still don't think I got it neutral from that other show. And there's all kinds of slop there that doesn't, you know, it's our dog's really that loose. I guess we can put this here. Now the sprocket cover or the gear case cover. Oh God. This is later model, you can tell, 77s, they had a vent and a big valve, a one-way valve, check valve here. What's it called, the woohoo valve or something, because it can make a funny sound when it gets oil in it. Or maybe that's the one that's inside. This one will have one, I think, built inside, and then they vent here up into the carburetor uh, air filter area. Let's do this. How are we doing? We got audio? Yeah, we got video, you bet. One more here. And this is the horror. Guys, pull this apart. You don't have to drain the oil out of the transmission primary to get in here. But you can see I put a hot water heater pan just in case. People pull this off and poing, and then they're, you know, if they don't have a manual. Oh, one more. See, <laughs> never force anything. I'll stick a screwdriver in there and start. And of course, once again, kind of shade tree engineering, the lengths of the bolts are different. So you got to go figure, you know, these are shorter. You got to go figure out the bolt lengths and make sure you have that right. That's why the parts manual. Oh, by the way, these funky heads. Let's go on this one here. Can you see? Called Philister with an F. Philister head. But you can buy them after market. No, they should... It's coming off. Sometimes you can do this. Uh, maybe you know, screw something in here, or put a you know screwdriver in here and pull a little bit. But but n never do that and pry. That's just going to put nicks in your surface. And don't have tension on the valve. You know, don't try to do this with pressure. There is a place the motor where supposedly all the tension's off of these. I've never found it. So if you're careful and you push on this one, see, I pushed that cam in because you can reach it here through the cone. And there you are. So yeah, this is, I think this is what they call the woo-woo valve or the woo-hoo valve. Because if it gets oil in there, it starts making noise. And it's a one-way check valve. So when the pistons come down, air goes out. As the pistons go up, that seal off. This is a 77. And later, you know, the important, Part of this, people say, oh, don't scratch it, put it down, and they nick up all the gasket surfaces and it leaks. Another hack thing, this gasket's glued on. Never, ever do that. I'm going to have the joy of taking that off. Uh, you can, you know, inspection, you know, are any of these loose? Sometimes they loosen up. And then there's a, a kit. These, I noticed, don't have pins like the earlier models. There's a little steel pin that keeps them from rotating. These, they must just press fit in. You have to ream them. You have to, as a matter of fact, I think you're supposed to ream them with the cases apart to line ream them. It's a big deal. Then the cams, which are here, this is what trips people up. Like I said, I don't know how to, without a Kickstarter, how am I going to bump this motor? We'll figure it out. Notice the colors here, green, white, red. These are color match, or uh, they're fitted, right? to be within a thousandths, sub thousandths of an inch. When they're loose, they whine or make noise. When, you know, when they're tight, they whine. When they loose, they make noise. So that's the big difficult thing in sportsters. All these spur gears, keeping them quiet. Here's a, here's a white, white. So in the factory, they, they make this motor, this particular motor with this particular gear case. They set it up and, and figure out how to do those. There's stuff in the service manual, how to do it. You know, when, and I think, I don't know how long ago, you can actually order slightly different, you know, 10 thousandths over. You put a roller bearing on each side of the gear and measure it with a micrometer. There's all this grief. But to time the motor, you can see, I hope, can you see it? Ah, I'll get the uh, little camera out and take a picture. So, there's no timing for this gear. 
Oh God, why is this so? Man, there's some issues with this motor. There we go. I can see, can you guys see it? There's some grunge right here. That may account for it. It's one of the things you can note. I'll have a video. It might just be a little patch of rust. Almost certainly, it may be at the bottom or maybe it floats, the water floats to the top and all the oil. It's, it's one of those, there's not a lot of load on this. Probably can get away with it. But interesting to note, okay. So then timing these where everybody freaks out and the, the gears all fall down. Timing them, there's a, there's, you can see a, a, a stake mark, you know, a little slot here. There should be one here, this one, a little one right here, this one, one right here. This one needs a slot right there. There's a place you can turn this motor. I cannot see the slot. See, this is where the other tip I gave you about either this kind of magnifier or this kind of machinist magnifier. It's your friend. And I don't see it. Oh, maybe that's it. Yes, oh, it was pointed dead up. So, because valves are a twice around engine rotation, this is supposed to point to this gear, but it's way out of time now, or not out of time, but out of setup, because the mark is here, but the mark on this gear is here. Now, you're allowed, you know, once you get this mark pointing towards this shaft, because these two gears are mating, you're allowed just to pull this out and spin it around. I don't know, I'm gonna pause everything and see if I can turn this motor. Maybe I can turn it from up here. Oh yes, okay. Only because we're doing a top end, right? What if you wanted to get out here? Either you, you shouldn't have the battery hooked up, right, when you're doing all this, but you might wanna bump the battery here real quick and see if you can get the, get the thing to, to bump over. Or, like I said, well, maybe we'll do it real time. Go back here. I believe you put it. Come up. I'm trying to get it in a high gear. And where I'll tighten this. So you leave it in gear and it's just tightening the nut, which is great, but sooner or later it's got to get bottomed out. There's no sprocket in here, so that's not good news. Don't take a pipe wrench to this. Right? That's not, that's not cool. I, I, I've never worked on one of these, no Kickstarter. Okay, so it's a neutral now. It's missing clutch pieces or something, because if it's in gear, it's in first gear, and I'm turning this, this should be turning. So there's something going on in here. It's a good reason to, we'll learn that later. But you see the joy you can have. Now, because we're lucky, we can get these guys off. Where was that? Where was that? It's right here.
Okay. Cleanliness, remember, here. So now it's pointing there, and we can retime this engine just by spinning this around. And now you can see the two slots, two little marks right here. Let me get this for you. Line up. But what doesn't line up, oh my gosh, what a mess. No, that wasn't the right mark. I got to go over a little. <laughs> because there's a mark here and a mark here. So three, there's three marks on, the, on this is the ignition, number two. And then this one's wrong, so you can pull it out, rotate this one, and a gear is a ton. If you're off a of gear, the other thing is you can take, ah, uh, no, that's definitely a gear off. That's definitely a gear off. Why can't I get this? Well, like I said, there we go, finally. So then this one you can see is a gear tooth off. So hopefully you can get this, rotate this one, and you can see the kind of sports to related joys you, you're gonna have. Okay, so now these line up, these line up, and you get to take this guy out. Be careful, this is where you put the shims, right? Uh, you can put them on this side or this side. These should be P cams. What do they say? Boy, I'm blind as a bat. Here we go. Q cams. I guess they're up to Q by now. P, Q, R. And so the same principle, right? You got to carefully get this out past. And then this one points. So it, it can be challenging. Pretty close. Oops, no. Wrong, because this has two marks. So I guess this mark goes like this. Off by a gear. Mark, mark. And then this guy, this mark here. I can't even remember where I was. Here it is. And this one's easier because one tooth over, one tooth over. There we go. So now it's timed. The marks all lining up. We'll take this picture, hopefully. And if you get it off, you'll know right away when you start the motor. Uh, once again, you don't have to drain anything. So let's get some right or wrong. I tend to put all the gears in together. They are marked. This is obviously when it goes where the cone is. This one used to drive the tack. It used to have, like I say, the parts book. Can we fit them all? This should say, it says 3Q, right? One, two, three. So this is three. This is part of the thrust washer system, right? All of this stuff will get solvent cleaned. Yeah, don't forget this. And then there's a bevel here. If memory serves correct, the bevel goes towards you. It's in the book. So there's that. So, other than trying to figure out what's going on up here in the, in the primary side, something's weird if I can put it in gear. And it's so hard going in gear. So that goofiness is going on too. So it's a good thing uh, somebody was nice enough to put a cap here. This one's open. Uh, getting the oil pump? Let's get the oil pump out of it. Let's pause everything. I'll come back with the uh, Allen wrench. We'll put these tools back in the box. You know me. I like getting stuff back in the box. We'll be back in a flash. All right, we're back. We got our bond house Allen wrenches. I designed this motor mount thing here. 
high enough so in theory I should be able to drop the oil pump off. Not if I don't have the right size wrench though. Is this it? Try the ball in. Maybe that'll be a little quicker. Yep. Okay, I got bored, so I sped up the uh, video four times, four times speed. Uh, because this is like a junkyard dog motor that's obviously put together from scraps and bits and loose assembled. Uh, either there's dirt or something's making these uh, four pump screws. They should just be finger tight. You know, once you crack them, they should come out. Usually they're nice and oily because they are oil pump bolts. So I got the first one out here. Don't worry too much. Nothing too fancy going on. A uh, little because of, I'm using that darn uh, hot water heater pan for when we take the primary off. I'm worried about a bunch of oil going all over the living room here. So it makes it a little harder to get underneath here. I'm getting my uh, arms underneath. But I'm going to come up with a brainstorm right now and just tilt the motor over. And... Uh, Getting, getting this uh, front one. They, they're, they weren't Loctited in, but something is binding them a little bit. So getting this back one, uh, the Allen wrench, you know, ball drive Allen wrench. You can see now it's backing out. So now I'm trying to hold the pump up against the body and use that to ease it out. So here we come. We're starting to come out of it. You can just hear it now rattling so finally we get that last bolt out by shaking the body and taking tension off of it I'm going to make you suffer and watch this misery because somebody made me suffer I really don't see any Loctite there okay little glip tall here and a little touch here. You don't time these, you just stick them in. Let's put it together. There's, there's little springs in here, you know. You, it's a little, that's a little more resistance than I'd like. So we'll get into uh, rebuilding the oil pump. There is This is the georotor type, right? Because it's got like this thing offset and this ring on the outside that runs in that housing. This is the check valve so that oil from the tank comes in to the, I guess it comes in through the pressure side and because the pump isn't running, it can't blow this seat off. So you can, you can get this stuff apart. There's a little pin you have to get out with a pair of needle nose. There'll be an oil pump show for that. This is just getting the big stuff off. And you can see how great these plastic bags are, both for keeping stuff straight and keeping stuff clean. All right, there we go. F. You still have cleanliness problems, right? You got these needle bearings here. I may even have uh, the tool to get that out. It's pretty. It's a little, you know, prong thing that you open up like this, so you can stick it through, prong it open, and then like slide hammer them out and pull them out. I usually just try to leave them, except if you split the case, you can obviously just go from the other side and tap, tap, tap. A lot of motor builders, you know, for as cheap as what I seven bucks, I don't know, eleven bucks, just Buy new ones, right? Don't reuse because the, the grid, even though I said they'll grind sand up and crush it, it may not be worth it, right? If you have new bearings and it's like a hospital clean environment and you tap those in. So that's that. Uh, this comes, th this nut holds this spur gear and this gear for the oil pump on. You know, this drives the, the crank, this, dri or this drives the cams, this drives the oil pump. Stud usually stays in. Not a lot of hole else. There's, there's a locating dowel here. There's a locating dowel here. 
They don't put multiple dowels because the whole gig is trying to get that cam here properly spaced to this. So it looks like what they, they're thinking was, well, we'll locate it here and it'll just kind of rotate around the cams and life will be good. Sloppy, right? It's obviously not a precision instrument. So that's it for the right side gear case sprocket cover. Uh, this isn't total, st oh, here's, here's a tip when you do split the cases. There's a little bolt here. Don't break them like the owner of the Harley shop did in Sunnyvale when he pried on it because the cases wouldn't split. They, they forgot there's a little cap head screw here for, in addition to the big case bolts that you can see. You know, down here there's three little ones and there's ones that come from the other side. But splitting the case will come in a little bit. We'll get, I'm really curious is what's wrong over on that clutch side. Is there, is there a primary in this bike? Do I have to go buy all that stuff to get a working, working model? So we'll get into that next show. For now, Sportster Paul here, having fun. Hope you're having fun in your Sportster project. Catch you next time.